Is it possible to make a spot welder with a regular transformer and without dismantling it? Spoiler alert! Nope! But here's the thing, we are about to find out why. If you never worked with high currents, the demonstration you're gonna see could be really insightful. Let's power it up! I have this big transformer that's been lying around for a while and I got the idea of trying to use it for a spot welder. But I didn't want to go the usual route of tearing apart and replace the secondary coil like people often do with microwave ovens. So I started with a basic test setup, a circuit breaker, it's 50 amps, just in case a cable and a foot switch. Then the main important step, inserting a single turn coil. Now, instead of dismantling the transformer, my idea was to wedge a sheet of aluminum through the small gaps between the existing coils and the core. That way I could avoid damaging the transformer. Copper would have been a better choice, but aluminum is much easier to work with, even though it is more resistive than copper. To avoid shorting against the iron core, I also slipped in a couple of paper sheets as insulation. Next, I made two electrodes out of solid copper rod. One end was shaped smooth, and on the other end I drilled a cavity to fit the cable. I also threaded a hole on the side for a screw so I could lock the cable in place. That little job took me a solid 15 minutes, uh, but hey look at these electrodes, aren't they gorgeous? Then I terminated both the cables and bolted them to the aluminum coil. All these connections has an influence to the final result as you will see later on. And here it is, the final setup. Now, this is just a proof of concept, and before testing it, I was afraid to get burned. But I was not running that risk. <laughs> well, well, this was mainly a proof of concept, but uh, my expectation was more like... Uh, instead, I've got uh, this... Uh, oh. One thing that I noticed is that uh, if I touch the bolts together, I get these uh, little sparks and uh, a little bit of <laughs> Yeah! And uh, if I touch the cables, yeah, the, the cable gets something, but... Clearly every joint here is uh, a point of losses, so um, at the end when we touch the part uh, here we have very little current uh, and most of the uh, dispersion is here because this point becomes hot, almost hot, and, uh, and here maybe not much here. And let's check the voltage. Well, the voltage is uh, 0.97, 1 volt, 850 volt uh, transformer. So 850 over 1 volt uh, is uh, just 850 amps, which is something, yeah? Clearly we lost a lot uh, along the, the path. So clearly this is the weakest point, uh, in this one, and maybe if I make this, and maybe if I make this uh, a little bit uh, pointed, uh, it's better. I have to change this. Now this is around uh, 1.5 millimeters. Make this bigger. So I thought to use this cable, but it is, it's uh, quite uh, cumbersome to use and it's not that flexible. Eventually I thought to double this cable so it is more flexible. Also I thought to prepare a kind of uh, plier, a kind of 
tool to support uh, these pins. Of course, because I need to have this isolated, uh, I use wood. <laughs> Put this clamp here to make sure that uh, it won't open up. I uh, have to do this in two parts, I think. Now we need something to clamp these uh, two electrodes hole here and here. This segment uh, went a little bit off and this is the price to pay for using fast setting glue. <laughs> Forcing these two cables into this hole is a bit of a challenge. I, I don't think uh, it would happen to anything special, but let's try. Well, nothing. Ah, uh, yeah. Nothing. <laughs> let's see. Yeah. Oh, wow, wow. Okay, it's heated up, but uh, it doesn't weld absolutely. <laughs> it was so nice. Uh, multimeter at the output of the transformer. Let's check. Uh, let's check the voltage, of the output, of the output of the transformer. It's uh, 820 millivolt. Now 
I measured the voltage here. Let's check it. What? 0.6 volt. Not bad. And this way. 0.1 volt. Mm. Now let's see the current. Uh, the current is under 48, under 44 millivolt. We have a shunt that that is uh, um, 100 amps, uh, 60 millivolt. So 100 amps uh, over 60 millivolt uh, times under 45, uh, 145 millivolts. Uh, it's 240 amps, not that much. <laughs> so we can do the math about every segment. Uh, however, when uh, this is completely shorted like this, uh, the current the current is much higher, is 300, 310 amps. Again, <laughs> not that much. Will it make any difference? So let's so let's try with the copper. And here the voltage is 836. Eight, eight, uh, this uh, translates into 383 amps. And uh, yeah, it is a gain of about 22, 24%. It doesn't change much. <laughs> let's see if uh, it is able to do something with this two piece of steel. Yeah. Oh, actually, it welded. <laughs> it's a poor welding, but uh, you can see there is a little bit, uh, yes, a little spot, less than one millimeter. <laughs> Let's try again. This time I made the points uh, a little bit uh, larger. So let's see if something changes. Managed to make uh, some small uh, micro webbing, but it's pretty poor. <laughs> so let's break it down uh, to understand uh, every part of this circuit. First off, the test has been made. Uh, Using this uh, connected like a short circuit, uh, so we tested the actual circuit without any workpiece. With this shunt, we measured a current of 310 amps. But this shunt has an influence on the circuit, as we will see later on, because uh, the voltage drop of this uh, shunt is comparable with the voltage drop of the other parts of the circuit. Hmm. So, uh, the voltage drop ac across the, this single turn of coil uh, at the transformer, 152 millivolts uh, at 310 amps, uh, which means that uh, here we have a resistance of uh, about 490 microohms, this uh, single piece of aluminum that is turned around here. This contact here, the electrode, it has been measured here this contact these electrodes uh, have a resistance of uh, 255 micro ohms then uh, this cable has a resistance of about 445 micro ohms and this is, uh, includes uh, these terminals because the terminals uh, has their the terminals have their importance too uh, in fact, this single cable here, without the terminal, um, has a resistance of about uh, 267 microohm, and uh, the terminal itself is about 290 microohm. So yeah, uh, even terminals, uh, even joints, uh, bolts, uh, everything has its own importance in a circuit like this because the current is very high. And um, in this, this single bolt, for example, I mean the, the contact between this uh, terminal and the coil of the transfor transformer. This little 
part has a resistance of 32 micro ohm and uh, when we use a uh, a piece a work piece in the middle here of course the resistance increases even more and the current uh, goes down so the problem here is that we don't have enough voltage because uh, with more voltage we can push more current uh, through the workpiece because the workpiece is the part that uh, has the highest resistance so it's the part that limits the current and therefore the ability to weld the part itself because the current determines the amount of heat that is generated uh, in the part and, and so the ability to weld it so to make a point that uh, the problem is uh, the voltage uh, here this transformer has um, a tap at 115 volts so i try to use this <laughs> it's a hack to power it at 230 volts so uh, this will increase the output voltage twice and um, yeah but uh, the impedance of the primary is not designed to accept this voltage so i don't know i'm not sure i have here this is the breaker this uh, the current break breaker first let pr let's try at open circuit yeah yeah <laughs> it's a bit tricky let's try this Oh yeah, oh yeah, I, <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's ended <laughs> everything here, <laughs> yeah, yeah, actually this time has worked, so the problem here is the voltage, wow, wow, it made a, a whole one millimeter of hole here. <laughs> look at this hole so to correct this uh, i would need to increase to add more coils but for the purpose of not destroying a transformer well <laughs> this is impossible because there is not uh, enough space so yeah as an experiment this is a failure <laughs> um but but this is not the end of the story because I will use this setup, uh, excluding the, the transformer, to uh, make another circuit based on capacitive discharge. But that is a topic for another video. For now, that's all folks. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye! Uh, this shunt, which is a little bit small, because it's only 100 amps, uh, uh, shunts uh, for 60 millivolts so it becomes hot uh, pretty quickly but for a short uh, test uh, it's good enough